Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 15th of November. The S&P is making new all-time highs as is on balance volume and at the AD line this upward movement has support from rising market breadth. The next target remains the same at 3179. This bull market is very old now and it will eventually come to an end. Along the way up toward the end, which may be another one or two years away, I will be expecting three big consolidations, or relatively large. The next one I'll be labelling minor wave 4 and I'm expecting it to be quite shallow, a time consuming sideways consolidation to relieve extreme conditions. And then the one after that, intermediate 4, and the last one, primary 4. And within that, good strong upward movement. The charts are very bullish, supporting the Elliott Wave count, and I've been expecting this for quite some time, and that's exactly what we're getting. I am still absolutely bemused as to how anyone could label this a bear market. It, it's, it's a bull market. It's a bull market that began in March 2009. There have been a couple of bearish, big bearish moves, reaching 20% or a bit more, a pullback in total market value along the way within this bull market, but we haven't had that for quite some time. There's a really good strong V bottom, a sustainable low back here, and I'm expecting upward movement overall to continue and for the bull market to end at or before this limit is most likely. The bull market beginning in March 2009 I am labelling as the simplest of all Elliott Wave structures a simple five wave impulse. One is off to the left of the chart, it's the last candlestick for November 2014. Two is over here as a double combination and within it there's an expanded flat which is why one doesn't end at where you think it would. The two has got new price extremes beyond the start of A in there. That's how expanded flats work. Three ends here, four here, and five is underway. When you put one, two, three, and four in those positions, you then draw an Elliott channel using Elliott's first technique from one to three with a copy on two. It perfectly shows where four found support. Looking at this chart at this time frame, you'd think I'd drawn the channel from two to four, and put a parallel copy up on the end of three. That's not how it's drawn. It's drawn from one to three with a copy on two. Two things about this channel tell me that it's probably drawn correctly. Four perfectly found support and the third wave has an overthrow. This is the strongest portion of a bull market, a third wave within a third wave. It should correspond to the strongest movement in price and the strongest reading from MACD. It absolutely does. The implications of this, and this is where Elliott Wave can be quite powerful, the implications are really important. First of all, it tells us to expect a fifth wave, which must subdivide as a five wave structure, and it may not be longer than the third wave, because in this instance, the third wave is actually shorter in length than the first wave, and a core Elliott Wave rule states a third wave may never be the shortest of one, three, and five, so when three is shorter than one, it tells us five can't be longer than three to meet that core rule. And that is an illustration of how getting the wave count right and applying Elliott wave rules can give you some really important information about what should happen next. This is one of the ways that Elliott wave can help in predicting future market movements. And that really is the whole purpose of Elliott wave but you've got to do it right for it to work. Attention now turns to the structure of cycle wave 5. There are only two possible Elliott wave structures this can be, a simple 5 wave impulse or an ending diagonal. There's not enough overlapping yet for an ending diagonal and a simple 5 wave impulse is the much more common structure for a fifth wave. I did have a wave count for a diagonal but it was invalidated when we got new all-time highs I think three weeks ago. Within cycle 5, primary 1 and 2 are complete, primary 3 may only subdivide as an impulse. It's very common for this particular market to exhibit extended third waves, and when the third waves extend, they extend in time as well as price. The second and fourth waves show up as more time-consuming corrections, like a stretched-out accordion at higher time frames. We can see intermediate 2 here, 
it lasted a couple of weeks it shows up very clearly at the weekly chart level I'll expect intermediate 4 to look somewhat similar to show up at the weekly chart level to be somewhat time consuming. Within intermediate 3 no second wave correction may move beyond its start below the invalidation point when intermediate 3 has moved far enough beyond the end of intermediate 1 then intermediate 4 should unfold and it must remain above wave 1 price territory and here's another way that applying Elliott Wave rules can help us in telling us what to expect from future price movement. I've been telling members for some time that once these third waves move far enough above the end of their first waves, expect price to remain above those points for future bigger corrections consolidations. Let's take a look now at the daily chart level. We're going to look at the high of intermediate one. Now we're focusing in on this big impulse for primary three. Here's intermediate one, a quick, deep, sharp zigzag for intermediate two. Intermediate three is incomplete and at two is extending. This is a very normal look for this market. Minor waves one and two is complete. Two is a quick, deep, sharp zigzag. Absolutely common, typical behavior for this particular market. Minor 3 now unfolding, I'm applying the most common Fibonacci ratio to minor 3 to calculate a target for it. Here's another way Elliott Wave can be useful in telling you what to expect for future price movement. I am expecting minor 3 may end close to this target and then minor 4 must unfold and it must remain above first wave price territory. I am expecting one two, three, big downward or sideways movements along the way up to end this bull market and this is going to take possibly a year or two to get up to at or below this point to complete this structure and along the way up three big pullbacks or consolidations and they must remain above their counterpart first wave price territories. The next one I'm expecting will be labelled minor four and I will expect it to be most likely, not certain, most likely to be shallow because here we now apply the guideline of alternation. Two is a relatively quick, deep, sharp zigzag. Alternation tells us to expect four may be a relatively time consuming and shallow combination, triangle or flat correction. They're all sideways movements, analogous and classic analysis terms to consolidations whereas two was more analogous or we would call it a pullback rather than a consolidation and so along the way up I'm expecting corrections to be relatively brief and shallow on up to this target the next target for intermediate three is for it to reach 1.618 the length of one and the next target for primary three is for it to only reach equality in length with primary one because this target fits with the higher limit which I explained to you at the weekly chart level. This is the start of minor three and I've taken some time to start again with a blank chart to look at various different ways of labeling this upward impulse and after having a bit of a play with it and having a look at different ways of labeling I think this is probably the best way to label it. I'm still seeing a fourth wave triangle for minute four but now I'm seeing minute one and two back down here rather than up here. There's no Fibonacci ratio between minute waves one and three but there is there are a couple of good ratios within minute three that's actually pretty typical for the S&P. Draw an Elliott channel around minor three now we've got this labeling from one to three with a copy on two. Look out for any more time consuming consolidations or deeper pullbacks to find support about the lower edge of that trend line. I am going to leave for the short term the invalidation point down here at the lowest price extreme within minute four. I'm seeing this as a little regular contracting triangle. I could be wrong, it could have been over as a multiple zigzag just down here. And this is possibly where minute five could have begun and if that's the case it could be one two three four five or this could be one and then two and two can't move beyond the start of one so leaving the invalidation point a little bit down here is being a little bit more conservative 
giving this marker a little bit more room to move. But overall on up toward the target, I will be expecting relatively brief and shallow corrections along the way. There's not enough weakness evident yet to indicate minor 3 may be coming to an end. But we've been surprised before, it's possible. For now, let's expect the structure is most likely incomplete until proven otherwise. At the weekly chart level, if we move the entire of this bull market down one degree, the bull market beginning in March 2009, if instead of super or grand super cycle one coming to an end, it could only be a first wave to be followed by a relatively brief second wave. The first weekly chart expects an absolutely devastating bear market may develop eventually after maybe another one or two years. Whereas the second weekly chart expects a bear market may develop, but it may not correct to much more than 20% of market value, and then a resumption of the bull market with increased underlying strength. I think that second weekly chart may actually be more likely. At the weekly chart level, we've got a nice strong upward week this week. A close pretty much at the highs for the week tells me to expect really likely that we're going to get more upward movement next week doesn't always work like that, just most often it does. A little bit of a decline in volume this week though, starting to show a little bit of weakness. Not enough yet to expect that it's over, and I will expect a bit of weakness to develop as this minor wave 3 comes to an end. On balance volume confirms again new all-time highs this week with price, this is bullish. RSI is not yet overbrought, there's still further room for price to rise. ADX is below 15 with all of these pullbacks within this upward trend. ADX hasn't been able to catch up, but it's really obvious there is an upward trend. There's a strong V bottom here, a sustainable low, a series of higher highs, a series of higher lows. That's the absolute basic definition of an upward trend. This is a bull market, it is an old bull market. It will eventually be followed by a bear market, but not yet. MACD is full ball bullish, it's above the zero line, gave us a bullish crossover a couple of weeks ago, and both of these lines have a positive slope. At the daily chart level, we have a breakaway gap here. If this is a breakaway gap, it should not be closed. Here's the last breakaway gap that was not closed. We had an exhaustion gap here and some consolidation. Now we've got a breakaway above that consolidation. Use the upper high of this candlestick here as a possible area of support for any corrections in the next week or two. Overall, there's a bit of support from volume at the daily chart level, but at the weekly chart, we're starting to show a little bit of weakness in declining volume. ADX at the daily chart level gave us back here the strongest signal it can give coming up from low levels, rising from below both directional lines. It's telling us there is an upward trend. There's still plenty of room to go before this trend may reach extreme. ATR is declining as price rises. That is absolutely normal behavior for this particular market. On balance volume continues to make strong new all-time highs, confirming all-time highs with price. It was a little bit slower, but it's certainly there now. RSI is overbrought on its own. This is not enough to tell us the upward trend has to end. If you look back at the price history with RSI, you will see plenty of times it's reached much more deeply into overbrought and remained there for fairly extended periods of time. This particular market has a strong bullish bias. Only when RSI has moved further into overbrought and then exhibit some bearish divergence with price for the short term, will I then expect it's being more bearish and telling us to expect a deeper pullback or a more time-consuming consolidation? We do not have that situation at this time. MACD is full ball bullish. Stochastics overbought can remain there for a long period of time when this market has a strong trend. And it was way back down here that I said that I expected that these lows were sustainable. V bottoms, 90% downward days, 90% downward day followed a couple of days later by a 90% operating companies only upward day. 
And here we had two 80% upward days back to back. That is exactly the situation you see, that 180 degree reversal marks a sustainable low. We have not seen price move back down to these lows. Back up here, I was telling us to expect new all-time highs from price. That's exactly what we're getting because we had that bullish divergence between price and the AD line. Let's take a look at that this week. An upward week this week, AD line rises. This upward movement from price has support from rising on balance volume and a rising AD line. It's got support from rising underlying market breadth. This is still a bull market with in reasonable health. This is not a bear market. I will expect upward movement to continue. The short term picture again. New all time highs from price matched with new all time highs from the AD line. There is no bearishness here. Every bear market from the Great Depression and onwards with two exceptions. So I shouldn't say every, but bear markets with only two exceptions from the Great Depression and onwards have been preceded by a minimum of four to six months divergence between price and the AD line. And there is a positive correlation with the longer divergence leading to a deeper, more sustained bear market. Shorter or more brief divergence leads to a more brief and shallow bear market. There are two exceptions in 1946 and 1976. Those two bear markets began after no divergence with price in the AD line, or very, very little, and they were relatively shallow bear markets. And so what that data history tells us to expect is at this time, with this particular bull market, we can see there is zero divergence between breadth and price. It tells us it is very unlikely, not impossible, but very unlikely, that a bear market is about to develop any moment. And if it were to develop, it would be most likely to be relatively shallow. Now I know that's past behaviour, but that's all we have to go on. We cannot predict the future without looking at the past, and that's what we're trying to do. Nothing is going to be certain. This is a balance of probabilities that we're dealing with, as in all technical analysis, including Elliott Wave. Looking at inverted VIX now, this is inverted, so as inverted VIX rises, VIX falls. This just makes it a little bit easier to look for divergences, which is what I'm doing here. There is now over two years of bearish divergence between price and inverted VIX. I, this is proven to not be particularly useful in timing an end to this bull market. This may be part of the ageing topping process that this bull market may be going through and beginning to get into now as inverted VIX fails to correspond with price to new highs, it shows that this upward movement from price is not coming with quite a normal corresponding decline in VIX. VIX remains elevated. This situation may continue further for further months or possibly even years. Sometimes at the end of bull markets you can see divergences with indicators or other things continue for several years. There was many years of divergence. I think the 2000 bear market that began in 2000, the dot-com crash, began after several years of bearish divergence between price and breadth. For this last week though, there's a little bit of new short-term divergence and upward week from price and VIX. Inverted VIX is essentially flat. That tells us that this upward movement from price doesn't have a normal corresponding decline in VIX. VIX remains essentially unchanged. This is a little bit bearish. It's not fully bearish because inverted VIX is flat, not declining. So I'm not going to give it much weight and it's really short term there. At the daily chart level, the short term swing high from price has been matched with a short term swing high from inverted VIX. There is no short term divergence here. That's all for me with your S&P analysis this week. I hope all of our members are having a most fabulous weekend.